Hey everybody, thank you for watching my new video. In this lesson, I'm going to compare WordPress and Wix so you can decide which platform is better suited for you to build your website. Now I'm going to try to keep it short and get straight to the point, not to waste any of your time. Okay, so the number one thing is how easy is it to use each platform? WordPress is going to be a little complicated for most people, unless you're a techie. You have to get a domain name, sign up for web hosting, install WordPress, install a bunch of plugins, upload a template, go through a bunch of settings, but you have a lot of flexibility with what you can do. And because of all this flexibility, some people find it complicated. Wix, on the other hand, is so simple that a five-year-old can figure it out. All you do is sign up with your email and start building your website right away. You don't have to install anything. You simply log in and create a very simple website using their page builder. The drawback, however, is that you don't get as much flexibility and the website you end up building is very simple. So when it comes to being simple and easy to use, Wix is definitely a winner. The second thing is price. There are two components when it comes to price. First is your domain name, such as your businessname.com. Wix charges $4 a month, which is about $50 a year. If you decide to build a custom website with WordPress, you're only paying about 15 bucks a year, which is much cheaper. Next is your web hosting costs. Wix charges 12 bucks a month to keep your website up and running. If you want to use WordPress, you're going to be paying anywhere from three to $7 a month. You can go as high as you want with WordPress, like 15, 30, 100 a month, if you're making a very high traffic site, but to replicate what you're getting with Wix, you're paying about five, seven bucks. So basically, when it comes to the total cost of running a website, WordPress will cost you a lot less in the long run. The last thing that we want to compare is the flexibility you have when it comes to building your site and the developer community that exists around each platform. Wix has a few hundred templates and a couple hundred plugins that you can install to customize your site. WordPress, on the other hand, has thousands of free plugins and templates. No other platform has as many free plugins and templates as WordPress. And you can also create your own plugins and templates if you want to, but in most cases, you won't need to because chances are someone has already made a plugin for whatever it is that you're trying to do with your website. Also, because WordPress has such a large community, you can easily find developers and designers to help you with your website if you're building something very complicated. For most projects, however, all you have to do is install a nice premium template, add some plugins, and your site is ready to go you don't have to hire anybody also there are a ton of tutorials on how to use different aspects of WordPress so you can always find help if you run into any issues so once again WordPress wins in this category but like I said if you just want to make a very simple basic site you should definitely check out Wix just go to Wix.com and sign up for free but if you want to see how easy it is to set up WordPress just continue watching okay so to install WordPress you need a domain name and web hosting most web hosting companies can sell you both. However, I prefer to get domain names separately from a company called Namecheap.com and then connect them to different hosting accounts because I have many different websites on different servers. So it's, uh, it's nice to have all your domain names in one place and then just connect them to a website that you need to. So I have been using Namecheap.com for over 10 to 15 years now and I have never had a reason to switch. They don't rip people off with ridiculous prices like most domain name providers who target newbies and they're very popular amongst web developers who know what they're doing and they're not easily ripped off. So to get a domain name you can click the link in the description or go to Namecheap.com. Type in a domain name you want and click on search. Add the domain name to cart and click on view cart. Here you will get your subtotal and as you can see you also get free privacy subscription for one year and then it rebuilds for about four bucks a year. Most other companies will charge you $15 a year because they target people who don't know what they're doing. So I strongly recommend you guys use Namecheap.com to get your domain names. And what domain privacy means for those who don't know what it is, is you can look up the name of any domain name owner by simply going to who.is who.is and type in, the, type in the domain name and you, you will be able to see the address and phone number of the owner of that name. Telemarketers use this feature a lot, so if you don't get privacy, you may, you may start getting some annoying phone calls from people. Next, all you have to do is confirm your order and check out. Now, I already have a domain name which I bought from Namecheap for this tutorial, so I'm just going to use that one here. So the next step is we need to get web hosting. The web hosting company I recommend is HostGator, and I'm also going to show you how to get a discount from them. They have basic starter plans and they also have extra fast WordPress hosting plans, which you don't really need for now unless your website gets a ton of traffic and you need something really fast. For most people, I recommend you start off with something simple and then upgrade to a bigger plan later if you have to. So to get a discount from HostGator, you can click the link in the description or go to my website by typing in websitesdiy.org deals. 
Here you can use my affiliate link to get a discount on your hosting plan. Click on the discount link and this will take you to the HostGator discount page. Here you have three plans to choose from. The first plan, which is the Hatchling plan, gets you one website with unlimited traffic. The second plan, Baby plan, allows you to create multiple websites with unlimited traffic. And the third plan or the business plan allows you to build a secure e-commerce website. And what this means is sometimes when you're browsing a website, you will see a green padlock in the top left corner beside a domain name. And this basically indicates that you have a secure connection, which is something you must have if you want to process credit cards. So pick the plan you want. I'm going to pick the Hatchling plan. Click on I already have a domain name and type in the name that you bought earlier. Next, choose how many months you want to pay for. The longer the plan you choose, the bigger the discount you get. Enter the billing information and check all the add-ons because you can do all this stuff on your own for free. Leave the coupon code as is, then scroll down, accept the terms and click on checkout. Now I already have an account with HostGator, so I can't create a second one. It won't allow me to, but check out and wait for a confirmation email with all your account details. So the next step is to connect your domain name to your hosting account. First, log into your email and find the second welcome email you got from HostGator. This will have all your account information. Look at where it says name servers. We're going to need to copy this information to your Namecheap account so the domain name is connected to your website. Now log into Namecheap, scroll down to find your domain name and click on manage beside the name. Scroll down to name servers and pick custom. Copy the first name server from your email into the first slot and the second name server into the second slot. Next, click on the green checkbox to save your changes and your domain name is now being connected to your web hosting account. This can take anywhere from 30 minutes to a couple hours, so be patient, this is completely normal, you just have to wait a little. So while that's happening, let's install WordPress. To install WordPress, go back to the second email from HostGator. Right click on the control panel link and open it in a new tab. Enter the username and password from the email and log in. This will take you inside your hosting account, also called cPanel. Here you're going to see a bunch of different features and different icons. It looks very confusing, but the good news is you don't need to know any of this stuff. All you need to do is click on WordPress to install it. From here, select the domain name, leave the directory blank. You don't want your website installed in a subfolder. You just want it to be your name.com, not your name.com slash website. Then click on next. Here you enter your website title, username, first and last name or just the initials. You don't really need to use your real name here if you don't want to. Uh, then enter your email, accept the terms and conditions and click install. Once the installation is complete, make sure to write down the username and password, which is automatically generated for you. If you forget your password, you can reset it by going to my installs and resetting the password from here. Next, we're going to log into your website. The way you do that is by typing the following link in your browser. Go to your name.com slash WP dash admin and press enter. If this link is not working, that's because your domain name has not finished activating. Remember I told you that it takes anywhere from half an hour to a couple hours for the activation to complete? So just be patient and come back in about 20 minutes. After your domain name has finished activating, log into your website with the username and password, which were generated for you after installing WordPress. Do not confuse these with the username and password for your hosting account. They're two separate things. Once you're logged in, you will be inside WordPress. Here you can install templates by going over to appearance and clicking on themes. You can set up free templates by clicking on wordpress.org themes, or you can upload your own theme, which you got from somewhere else by clicking on upload. Also, I highly recommend you spend 50 bucks on a professional template instead of using a free template. It will make your life 100 times easier and your website will look much better. I used to try to save money using free templates, but trust me, the amount of time you waste customizing them is not worth it. So to get professional templates, you can click the link in the description or go to my website, websitesdiy.org slash themes, T-H-E-M-E-S. Here I have a list of all my favorite places to get templates. After you've downloaded a template, you can just upload it under themes. Another important feature you need to know is plugins. Click on plugins to see what is currently installed on your website. Here you can search for and install whichever plugin you need. You can also upload plugins externally by clicking on the upload button. And that's basically how you build a website using WordPress. If you want me to walk you through setting up a premium template, just watch one of my other videos. It's a fairly simple process. And uh, anyways, I'm going to try to keep this video short and I hope you guys learned something and found this useful. So please like, subscribe and comment and I will see you guys in the next one.